usually, we're talking about real good flavor. And how does that happen? Well, it happens because the crop is really good. The tobacco that was used is really good. That's the only way flavor is going to be better or worse. Now, of course, this is a very different blend from the Monte Cristo, but being that it was rolled only a month apart, they're most likely, and I always say this because I don't want to be, you know, say definitely when you never know, I mean, maybe, <laughs> but most likely those cigars use tobacco from the same season, same crop season. So there's that. But anyway. Nice big swells of smoke. It's a long cigar. I have to puff a little extra to get all the smoke I want out of a draw. Draw is a little bit firm, but I have a feeling that once we get down a little bit, it's going to open up. I'm just not used to... Long cigars start out a lot more mellow because of that. A lot smoother. Smoke is cooler. Sometimes you get a lot more flavor from a long cigar. Sure, a shorter cigar can give you more punch, more initial like bang, but let's rephrase that you're able to detect more of the subtleties of a blend off of a longer cigar that's why you see like a, a lot of aficionados preferring cigars like this double coronas legendary cigars like the lusitanius like the punch double corona like the hoyo double corona so robustos have their uh time and place but if you want to like they say taste the full features of a certain blend you go after the longer cigar, longer sizes. Wow, man. This is just something else. Look how white that ash is forming on this. This is a prime box of... This is... This, this is... From, from what I've gotten so far, this is showing why this particular Vitola in the Partigas line is such a legendary cigar unbelievable so far. So anyway, let's get into our episode and get started here. First, I wanted to say a few words about this particular cigar, because even though we covered the Partagas brand, uh, certain Vitolas have their own stories or own things behind so them. So let's talk a little bit about this specific Vitola in the Partagas line. The Prominentes is the factory shape, very cool name. Double Corona, obviously. 49 ring gauge by 7.6 inches long. So by Cuban standards, that means you're basically smoking a 7.6 inch Robusto. That's a big fucking cigar, my friends. <laughs> Hopefully we have enough material to make this uh, happen. We do, don't worry. Now, now, when did this cigar first come out? I don't know. It's a pre-1960s release. After that, I really can't tell you. It probably dates back all the way back to when Partagas was first formed. I mean, the Double Corona was always a cigar to have in the lineup. Partagas was formed in 1827. Before the 60s and 70s, when they started cutting all these Vitolas after the Revolution, Partagas had probably all over a hundred shapes in it. So the Lusitanius was definitely one of those shapes. However, it wasn't always the same. Until 1976, the Lusitanius Vitola was actually a 109. Think Bolivar 109 or Edmundo Dante's 109, which is interesting and we'll see why in a second. Now, the 109 is a 50 ring gauge by 7.2 inches. So, I found that funny. You know, when, when I first started reading it, say, and it said the Lusitanius wasn't always the shape it is, I thought, oh, it's probably, you know, even a longer cigar, maybe an A size, and they cut it down. No, they actually made it longer. Because the 109 is a 7.2 inch cigar, and here we have a 7.6 inch cigar. So they knock off a tiny little clip of a ring gauge, one point, turn it from a 50 to a 49, and add some length to it, and we get the modern day Lusitanius. The size changed, but the name is the same. Now, how did it get its name? I'm not certain. It doesn't really say anywhere, but I have a feeling it has something to do with the fact that the original creator of Partagas came from Spain. He was a Catalan, and he came from Spain. Now, Lusitania, name-wise, 
is an ancient Iberian Roman province which included what today is all of Portugal and a good part of what is, is modern day Spain. So for some reason, I don't know how it exactly works out, but he possibly named it because of that. Don't really know. Anyway, beautiful. Got a little over an inch and that just fell off. And that's really, I can't believe this thing even stayed lit. I had to pause it, run all the way upstairs for a battery change and to do a little fact check on something, came down and the thing was still lit. It was like five minutes. I thought I was gonna have to relight. Anyway, pfft, unbelievable. This thing is burning beautifully. It's getting deeper. Uh, those notes of uh, subtle, smooth fruit are still there, but that orange peel effect is really taking over. A little more spice kicking in. Very nice, very nice. Good, good amount of salt. Not overbearing, like blasting you with nothing but salt that's covering everything up, like a lot of Nicaraguan stuff. Nice, nice mellow level of salt. Really, really good. I'm getting some, like I said, walnut. Maybe it's even like along with those sweeter creamy notes I kept saying buttery, caramelly. Maybe I'd call it like hazelnut or something like that. Very, very, very good. Very complex. Anyway, I cut myself off. It's interesting that it used to be a 109. Why? Well, I opened up earlier when I was lighting this and said this is a choice cigar among aficionados, and it happens to be the favorite of one of the most world-renowned aficionados and cigar collectors, Max Gutman of Mexico, who had a big hand in playing the part of the creation and sale and distribution of the Edmond, Edmundo Dantes. The, everybody says, oh, it's a Monte Cristo cigar. Yeah, that Edmundo Dantes, which is a 109. So Max Goodman, he was smoking these things way before they turned into what they are now, and they were his favorite cigars. He claimed in an interview with Cigar Aficionado that he'd been smoking 50 cabs of Partagas Lusitaniuses for almost 20 years straight. And that was his cigar. You know, so one of the things about creating the 109 was that he said, uh, nobody has time for a long cigar anymore. Everybody's always smoking Robustos. And, you know, if he was going to play a part in making a cigar, he wanted to try to bring back big cigars. So he did Edmundo Dantes in a 109 format. So I found that pretty interesting. But here's a guy. Talk about, you know, uh, he helped open up La Casa del Habano in Mexico. You know, and he runs a huge, you know, um, export-import tobacco operation down there. So he's a big shot. He's a big shot. And one of the first and foremost legendary collectors of Cuban cigars in the world. He has an unbelievable collection. Very nice. So anyway... That's about it for our history on the Lusitanius as it is. Um, tell you what, yeah, let us, uh, I'll puff a little more and we will give you a report on the first third of our Partagas Lusitanius and then get into some viewer emails. Sounds good. Mm, yeah, a little firm, but it's working. Wow. I'm telling you. Guys, these Partagas right now, well, right now, but 2013, these are on fire, man. I haven't tasted a cigar this young and this good at the same time. It does have a year, a year and two months on it, so obviously, you know, you can smoke them. Most aficionados, like, really, you know, I guess I would say, you know, by the book, they probably wouldn't smoke them yet. They'd probably say they're not quite ready. I and mean, most guys, you know, most guys I know try them and say, by 
flavor by what they taste, whether they're ready or not. They don't just let them sit there and say, well, they're not ready just because they're not vintage, just because they're not four years old. These are definitely ready to be smoked enjoyably, especially if you like a cigar with a lot of punch. Being so young, Olusitanius here has quite a bit of punch, especially coming into the second third now for such a long Vitola. You know, Partagas is known for that, like the Partagas shorts are known to be little firecrackers. I mean, they have a lot of zest, a lot of flavor. Bang. This thing is surprising me. Very smooth, very mellow, extremely mellow, especially from the light. Because of the length of the cigar, you have really cool smoke, you have a long draw, you know, so you have to work for it a little. That's the only thing we'll get to that, but let's talk flavor for a minute. My God, does this cigar have flavor. On every end, the spectrum is dazzling. I gotta say, and that's why I'm, I'm trying to make this a point, for a cigar this young, this cigar has so much complexity, it's unbelievable. I'm getting flavors like from left field, right field, all over the place. Every draw is something different. Oh. On the filler itself, you have a very subtle salt. Mostly, though, in the background, if you, if you search for it, there's like this walnut, maybe toasted nuts, earth, nuts, some salt. When you pull in the draw, it's so twangy. It's got this definite, definite sense of like orange zest to it really twangy with a bit of sweetness you can detect this I don't know what I'm calling it, some sort of sweet creamy like almost like I, I really don't even know what to call it you know uh, it's unbelievable though and then on the finish like after you blow the smoke out not until a few seconds after the spice starts to register and you get this little bit of spice that tingles it plays with the palate and it's just decadent Really, really, really good. Unbelievable. You know, it, when you got the cigar in your mouth, and we're going to get started here, and you're just looking, you know, not puffing, just got the cigar in your mouth, on the filler, there's a really rich flavor of toasted nuts and earth. Definite definite and then you have that subtle salt and then when you pull the draw in a lot of salt a lot of twang a lot of citrus a lot of everything just comes blasting in the flavor of the smoke alone is amazing this is one of those cigars that I would really recommend trying as is straight cut as I always smoke it and then try one with a punch to block off the filler and just taste the flavor of the smoke alone, I guarantee it will surprise you. But this cigar is something to behold right now. Really good. Quite mellow. Quite mellow. It doesn't have me, you know, I'm not really feeling it too much yet as far as that goes, as far as strength goes. But it's a big long cigar so that would be balanced, not to knock you off your feet right away. That's how a proper cigar should be built. You know, today's cigars, especially in the American market, people are obsessed with, you know, strength being like, you know, blown back in their chair after three puffs. I mean, what good is that? You know, you, you get yourself a 60 ring gauge, seven inch fucking horse cock, you light it up, bang, 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 you're fucking out there like this, and then what? You're going to enjoy the rest of the cigar? You're fucking zombified from the nicotine. I mean, you, you're blown away. Really, and so many Nicaraguan cigars do that, and I can't stand that. And that really co would come into play more if I rated some of those cigars, which we'll probably eventually get to, where in the balance category, they'll get a fucking zero, because that's not how a proper cigar is supposed to be made. You know? Now, a lot of people are... This is one of those things where I was just saying before, connected to that, most aficionados would say that, you know, that's just one of my personal opinions. Balance, it has to do with a lot of different things, not just strength, not just flavor. It's a whole combination of things, how all of those things, strength and flavor, burn and draw, how all of those things work together. And, you know, you can't recognize nuances and how good your burn is and if you're in your chair like smoke like fucking dangling up from your fucking nostrils like you've just been shot. <laughs> Oh, man. 
But anyway, like I said, you know, we talked once again, short format my ass. We did so much. We showed the pictures. We talked about the history of the actual Vitola de Lusitania for a little bit. Introduced some names. But you guys, you know, you're always going to learn something. If you don't didn't know who Max Gutman was, uh, you know now every Cuban cigar smoker collector worth the soles of his shoes should know who Max Gutman is uh, from Mexico. Very interesting stuff there, and we connected the Lusitanius to him, being that it's one of his all-time, or if not his all-time favorite cigar. Basically, that's his cigar, his staple cigar. Uh, so we did so much already, but luckily for us, we have a lot of cigar left. So as promised, we're going to get into some viewer emails. So guys, if you didn't notice, if you didn't notice, number one, we have a new channel trailer, which I'm very proud of. It replaces the old one, which some people liked. It did get us a lot of attention that I was looking for, some more viewers and everything, but one person pointed out that it's confusing. It almost seems like it's a tourism site to Cuba or something, <laughs> more than it is about cigars, which was true. So I fixed that. Check it out. I think you'll admire it. It's some uh, good editing and cigar stuff to look at. Number two, we have an official Dr. Joe Show laptop which is down here at our convenience so we can look up any of the questions we may have rather than me having to run all the way upstairs finding the answer and all that whatnot and also to log into my channel and directly see your comments so at any time I need to I could just move it right over here and use that from now on instead of using these however the funny thing is is I had printed these out already right before I found this laptop. Yes, I found it. Somebody threw it out with the charger wrapped around it. I was walking my dog, Max. She always brings me good luck. Uh, and, you know, I have no money because I spend all my money on cigars. So, there's no way I was getting a laptop anytime soon. Even, I, I can't even afford to spend 200 bucks. You know, I just can't do it. it I cannot fucking afford it. Um, and I just needed something good enough to get on the internet, get an internet connection from my router and everything upstairs, and bingo bango, here she is. So, this is our new computer. Now, let's get started on some comments. What I have here are several pages of my most recent comments and emails dating from, well, anywhere from two weeks ago up till present, and I've broken them into sections of what type of questions they are and whatnot. So we'll take one from each and go along for as much time we have. We'll do kind of like a revolving thing here. Now, at the start here, I have my favorite comments personally, uh, you know, ego boosters, motivators, and would just like to share with you a few of my favorites of what people are saying about the Dr. Joe Show. 248 Rocketman 248. I just recently discovered your channel, and like Captain Crunk, I was skeptical at first. I'm glad I stuck around because your videos are awesome. Your passion really shines through, and it's changed the way I enjoy my cigars. Based on this review alone, I broke down and bought a box, having never had one before. Uh, he commented uh, this comment during the Tatuaje Petit Lancero episode. After smoking just one, I immediately went and ordered a jar of the Corona Gorders. Amazing little flavor bombs. Definitely in my top five. You have no idea how good that makes me feel because that is obviously one of the main points of these reviews. What good are my reviews if people don't trust what I say? If people do out there don't watch the review, great, you enjoy it. But now, since you're a cigar smoker and I'm a cigar smoker and I'm saying, hey man, this fucking cigar is worth a shot. You should know by now, guys, that I don't give out nines, you know? Most of the ratings we've ever done are, you know, I don't know, somewhere between the 7.5 and 8.5 range. Uh, some a little lower, and then a select few that have gotten a 9, and very few that have gotten over a 9, and no cigar has gotten a 10 yet. Uh, I don't think any cigar has even gotten a 9.75. I think 
it was 19.5 possibly I can't really remember it might have been the boat no not even that I'm not really sure anyway I love the fact that you know when he said it changed the way I enjoy my cigars you know that personally I'm not looking to change anything about anybody but I think maybe what he means and I, I can only you know this is only conjecture I'd like to actually talk to this guy and ask him well what do you mean by that possibly to look a little deeper uh, rather than just you know grab a cigar and smoke it and this one's good and cigar aficionado said that one's good and I smoked that and yeah I, I, I like this one I don't like that one but look a little deeper into you know like what we talk about, the history behind cigars, you know, and everything else that, that goes along with it. There's so much more than just fucking smoking them. Uh, smoking them is the best part, of course. But, you know. There we go, okay. So, next viewer, Jack Shemesh. This could be the greatest cigar talk show in the history of cigar talk shows. Spread the word, folks. Thanks, Jack, but... What history of cigar talk shows are you referring to exactly? Um, as far as I know, this is, you know, there are a lot of review channels out there, but I wouldn't go so far as to call them cigar talk shows, really. Uh, you know, some come close, and, you know, some, some do other things than just reviews, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to get into debating who's who and who's what and who's good and who's not. Uh, but I would definitely say that the Dr. Joe show, and not just because I, I'm the one who does it, just because of the way it has turned out, is definitely the closest thing to a cigar talk show, except we have nobody to talk to, <laughs> except you guys out there, which is definitely good enough for me, uh, good enough right now. Hopefully in the future, as some people have been asking, maybe we'll be able to get some guests on here. Uh, I'd like to start probably with just some people I know, random cigar smokers. So you have some thoughts and opinions by someone other than myself, because I am not the end-all, know-all to everything in the universe. Uh, other people's opinions and knowledge definitely counts very highly. Uh, and then who knows, maybe in the future we'll be able to get some people who are really in the biz, you know. Uh, I'd love to get like a couple of like, you know, just, I don't know. Fuck, you know what? It's all about the numbers, man. It's all about the numbers. We're coming up on 800 uh, subscribers now, so... Shit, what are we coming up on? Yeah, we're coming up, we're 793. We're coming up on 800 subscribers. That's a nice number, but it's definitely not a high enough number to get Carlos uh, Fuente to sit here and talk to me. Now, if we were coming up on... 8,000 subscribers, we may get, I don't know, I don't even know, maybe somebody who's a startup that's getting some recognition already and wants to get their name out there more, definitely wouldn't get a Pete Johnson, probably not, although 8,000 is pretty fucking high for any kind of cigar channel, we have a long way to go to hit anything like that, I think to get... Carlito Fuente to actually come and talk to us on the Dr. Joe show, we probably need like 80,000 subscribers. <laughs> hey, you know, I wouldn't mind going to talk to him. You know, maybe I'll send out some emails and, uh, you know, or cross my fingers and hope for some invites one day. You know, even just five, ten minutes just to record a conversation, just to have something special for the show. Uh, but we'll look into doing things like that. One step Let's at a time. Move on a little bit. George Diaz, good video. You're a fucking character. Ha ha. Ha ha. You're fucking right about that, George. Or should I say Jorge? I'm sorry. J-O-R-G-E. Um, yeah, I am. And I think that's one of the things that people like about the show. You never know what I'm going to say next. You never know what I'm going to do next. I may do an entire episode and just be, you know, mellow as a clam. Or I may just fucking all of a sudden bug out about something. So, yeah, um, I like that.
Say goodnight, Max. <laughs> <laughs>